webinar series this month. Today we're going to be talking about import-export, and I know that that's probably pretty vital to a lot of people. For those that don't know me, I'm Kevin Winston. I am the uh, senior trainer here at uh, Cougar Mountain. Been around about 14 years, and uh, I was the lucky one that was chosen today to give you advice on importing. We'll be talking about as, uh, uh, as many import exports that I can get in into a half hour. I'm trying to try to get out of here at about 12:30 our time, uh, but we will have a, a Q&A wrap up so you can ask any questions. First of all, where is the import exports in every module? Uh, so no matter what the module, whether it be general ledger uh, or uh, AP or AR, you will find all your import exports under the word options table maintenance, and import-export. There's other places that you'll find, but this is the main tool we'll use. And then at, towards the end, I'll take you on a little tour where other import-exports are. When you open up the tool to be used, you can either choose between import-export, the file definition, what kind of a file it is, et cetera, et cetera, as we go through, and actually get to see where the import and how much has been done or has not been done. First, let's talk about the first import-export. One of the hardest things is it always opens up to be an export. Uh, my recommendation is always do a sample first, maybe two customers, two vendors, two inventory pieces, whatever it takes just to get your formatting correct. If you are copying and pasting from another software or other items that you want, you should get an export out first because the reason is you'll know the formatting that Cougar needs to import it back in. The file definition is the, the CAM report that you can send out. In this particular case, we have a choice of two, general ledger accounts themselves or general ledger with balance forwards. For those people that are new to Cougar Mountain, the second one would be the one that you want to use. Now, remember, this works in all modules, so when you open up AR, they have choices that you can have, and usually it's either two or three files of your choices. Inventory is probably one of the biggest ones and can be imported or exported out to your whim to change prices, list pricing, or even retail pricing. When you have an import coming back in, you'll have a transfer method of how you used it. Did you update it? Did you add new ones? That's what append is. Or did you do both? It only happens when you're importing the reports. So once a unit has been sent over as an export, your import then will ask you, which what, what did you do? Did you update or did you change completely the methods of bringing in your import-export? Choosing the file, you have three choices. Column, uh, the column position file, that's of course fixed length in some people's terms. Tab dilemma, which most of the customer service people will use. And then of course common dilemma, that is a CSV file. In our example today, we're gonna to be using tab dilemma. The output file is basically about these three dots right here. And I usually tell people to click on that because it's going to give you a choice of where you want to put the export to. My suggestion is just to take it out to your documentation and you use it there. Now, one of the things that will help you is on the output file, let's say it's general ledger, you're going to change the numbers or you're going to look at it, is that you put a date next to it. So that way you can use the same title, but different numbers. So that way every time you use it, it has, of course, today's date. In this example here, you can see that I've sent it out to my C drive under my uh, domain, and then it's under document. So that way the title itself, when you find the place you want to do, will be written automatically for you, and you don't have to try to guess. So go out, find out where you want to put it, then let the Cougar do the title writing for you. When you do that, you will then find that we're using the tab dilemma. I look at the dots, I find out, and I put my name here of the, of the data I want to name it. It's already set up as a tab dilemma. So in this particular case, I'm going to the library, I put it under documents, I'm going to give it a name and a date, because the date will make it unique every time you do it, use it. Once you have that in, then you click on Begin Export. It will finish all your exporting out, whatever you have in there, and it will tell you that it's been done successfully. The exporting is usually pretty basic. It's nothing that uh, hard. It's when you look at your format 
and try to change things. When you change things, if it's all cap lots on a column or something like this, make sure you're doing exactly the same. Otherwise, it will not import back. Most mistakes of import and export are actually done in the Excel spreadsheet. They try to change the format. They don't see the format as a date or how dates are handled. Now, in this particular case here, how do I find it after I've made the report? This is the biggest question that most people ask me. And I said, well, where did you send it? So in this particular case, I can right-click if I want, open up Windows Explorer, and go to my documents. Now, the best way to find anything very quickly is to arrange it by date modify. You have all these reports in your library, and there are probably quite a few whether it be Windows, uh, uh, Word, or Excel, or even PDFs. So I usually hit the date modified and look for the date that I did it. I then put that up on the top, and usually I can find it pretty easy. Notice that this is a text file. And the reason I know that, because it doesn't have the Excel on it, it has the text file, because we're going to convert it into an Excel spreadsheet. Now to do that, now I know where it is, is to go to the file of my Excel. You can see this is in an Excel format. I go to File, I go down to Open, and I use that. Once I've done that and hit File Open, then I find it again under my library, and you'll see that it's, well, hold it, that's not an Excel file. It will be, you need to convert it. So when you open it, you'll be using the Excel wizard to get your Excel correct. The wizard will come up, and notice how it says text import wizard up here, step one of three. So what it does, it, gives, it allows you to take your columns and actually break those down if you want to use it. For example, let's say you're a nonprofit company and you have a very long account number where you have a fund, a project, a program, and then finally the primary number. You might want to take that long number and actually change it to four columns rather than Cougars 1. You can do that as long as you remember that you have to, if you want to try to bring it back, you have to convert all those four into one again because that's the way Cougar looks at it. They don't have the segments, dashes, etc. So I open it up and you can see I have my two choices, the fixed length, if I chose that fixed length, or the dilemma, which it comes up exactly. So what I'm going to do now, look at it, make no changes, going to click on the word next. When I do that, that's where your tabs and your commas and colons come into play. So here it is. It's already separated the things out as what Cougar wrote it as. So we have the account number as one segment. We have the description as one segment. The classification as one segment, and so on and so on as I go in there. So I don't want to make any changes here, so now I would then click on Next. And now I'm in step three. And what it does is highlight things, so if you do want to change things, you can do this now as the final step. And of course, change it from General Tab. A General Tab would be something that is in either character, which would be a number or a letter. I can make it all text if I want, because I'm not sending it back. I want to be able to edit and use it in my own Excel and do. So we are now finished with the wizard. When I do that and hit finish, it actually turns now into my different columns that Cougar has set up. From there, I now can open up descriptions, classification, annual budget. Now, if I want to append or change this, then, of course, I would come in here and do whatever I wanted to, and then it's in the same order and send it back in the Cougar. So do I recommend doing, like, account number changes? or uh, Not really, because remember, that is your general ledger that you're playing with it. But you can put subcodes on if you want, and then bring it back in and just renumber it. So now let's talk about a little bit about the import, bringing it back in the Cougar Mountain. In this particular case, we select from export to the word import. We then look and change by that tra uh, transfer method. In this particular case, I updated. In other words, I added. And I appended those, uh, uh, putting in new ones onto, on top of the other GLs I have. I kept it as a tab dilemma. And of course, I would find it down here. 
because I want to bring it back when I say begin import. So again, I'm looking for the tab dilemma file, and it has to be the same way coming back in this particular case of text file. See, tab dilemma. So when I save it, save it as a tab dilemma after my fixes, I now can find it. You can see here's my date, and then that way it will write it onto my input file here automatically so I can begin importing. Again, if you can't find it, open up your Windows Explorer, go to your documents. In this particular case, I'm going to open up the report Excel and look at it again, make sure it's right, and then I'm going to bring it back in. I make sure it's the same file as when it went out. Now, one of the changes on the import is to make sure that the first row, which is your header row, has been selected. If you're bringing it back in, this is very important. If you're not bringing it back in, it's just a header file. You can get rid of it if you want. But in this particular case, I chose the header, and I went out and found where it was by using my three dots here button. Then I open up the import log, and before you start importing, you will get a backup message warning. Anytime you do an import or export, you should be able to make sure that you can do a backup first. So if something goes wrong, nothing is ruined. You just go back and restore back to where you began. And that's why this message comes up. If you select no, that means it won't bring it in, and you can do a backup first if you want. The only thing is when you do a backup, it would be the old information that you sent out, not the new one that you're trying to bring in. So try to do the backup first, and then you don't have to worry about that. Then, of course, uh, we say yes and continue on. So here's my import, the GL accounts I'm bringing in, update only, the tab dilemma we talked about, the first row. I found the file, made sure it was right, and I imported in all the new information into my master table. It will tell you it's been processed successfully. Now, there is one module that, for some reason, they have made the uh, import-export in a different place than all the other modules, and this is AP. So if you look for AP, don't go to Options and then Table Maintenance because you won't find it. In this particular case, you go to Vendor and open it up, and down the bottom is your import-export. How about text filing those regular little reports or trying to make it an Excel spreadsheet? Okay, any type of report, in this particular case, I'm using the AP aging report. If I want to try to get it onto an Excel spreadsheet, that's great. If you select the Microsoft Excel, e, the XLS file, you will get it onto an Excel spreadsheet, but it won't be in columns. You will have to separate yourself in the columns. So my recommendation is to put it as a text file, turn it into a text file, and from a text file, again, use the wizard and put it onto your Excel. Now it will be done just like we just saw. It will be done as if I started fresh. So any particular report can be done. Just do it as a text file. Now, before I open up for questions and answers, I'm going to show you on a couple of other areas that you should know about import and export. In the general ledger, you also have a separate uh, ledger under reports called spreadsheet export. This was made to export out to your Excel, but not to come back in. This would be FYI for you, but it's very easy to do. If I sit there and go through and wanted to have an Excel spreadsheet with my actual profit and loss, then I can actually set that up right away by putting in my opening of my, of my revenues, my ending of all my expenses, and I can even preview this before I send it out. Now, what it is is to take a look. There's your header file. There's all the numbers right here for your, your revenues. And if I go farther enough down, it previews all my expense lines. Now, if I export this, it's very easy. I click on Export, and it will go automatically out to my Excel and puts all the information onto it. And why would I want to do this is because it is set up for a quick and actual a profit and loss, and now I can work on each one of the periods if I want and adjust it myself or do my own separate reports. And that's what it was made for. So you could take little groups and make your own groups out of in Microsoft Office and use it that way. Now, one of the things I always tell people about when they open up an Excel spreadsheet Revenues are operating credit. 
So it looks like negative numbers here, when actually it's not. It's just telling you that in Excel, that's an operating credit. Whereas your expenses, got to find a good month here, is actually debits. So you can see that the debit now is an operating debit. So it actually does what accounting was made for in an Excel spreadsheet. Revenues are revenues, they're credits, and expenses are debits. The other place you can do import exports on is inside the budget management. There's a second tab that a lot of people don't see, and that's your import exports. And again, you have your three dots, and it works the same exact way. So if you're using budgets, you can change your budgets here in an Excel spreadsheet and bring them back in. In other words, you can take this year, and you're going to make next year's budget, put it into an Excel, uh, say, hey, I'm going to increase my revenues by 2%. I'm going to increase my expenses by 8%, and then just bring it back into Cougar. So you're doing all the calculations in your import-export. What can we do with SQL Studio to import and export? Well, SQL Studio can be used because it's already set up as a column. And you can use that. You must put it to an Excel spreadsheet and make sure the format is exactly what the format is going out. If the formats are different, then you have to adjust those columns. Copy and paste, cut and paste, whatever it is to keep the format the same. Some people just use the headers, and then they go to their SQL, throw it onto the same Excel with the headers on to make sure they all match. You can do that, and then after you get it all set, you can get rid of the, the board that you're using and then bring it back into Cougar. So can it be used? Yes, it can. So um, most people use the, um, when they use the studio, they are acquainted with the CSV files. They use that rather than what I use today was the tab dilemma. When importing an extremely created file, I'm sorry, externally in the a file, into the sales module is inventory and all related tables update with your order entry data. No, uh, it becomes history. So what happens is I've done an update, I've re uh, put information in, it will not be in history, the history will still show what was posted in your particular sales module. And that's because the audit trail cannot be changed. That's for security reasons. Gee, George, I don't know that much about Universal Bridge working with Denali, so I can't answer your uh, what about Universal Bridge. I'm going to tell you I believe it is, but I've never worked with it. I've always worked with just the Excel spreadsheets. Here's a basic question. When I export, am I simply copying the files or removing the files? You could save that if you want, but remember, you can append on these so if I bring over, let's say, a customer list or inventory or a, a vendor list, I can add on to it because I have the format in front of me, and I can add things that way. Basically, what, was the, what I see a lot of is people will take the inventory over, and they change their pricing on the Excel spreadsheet and then bring it back in. And there is a place on that uh, we actually put one on, so you can just change pricing if you want. You don't have to go through the 100 columns now you only have about six. Okay, thank you very much for all coming in. You can reach me uh, at kevinwinson at cougarmountain.com if you want to use that one, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions that you might have, even if it's in the next couple of days and stuff. But I thank you all for um, uh, coming to today's webinar. I hope you learned a little bit about importing and using it. And we'll try to get this recorded and get out there on the website so you can go through it again. And I appreciate it. Jeremy will be doing the next one. He will be back very soon. And uh, he uses your voice of the renowned. So, um, uh, but I'll be here always to oversee him. So thanks again. Enjoy your afternoon. Or for some people, enjoy the rest of the morning. Thanks again.